Good day and welcome, everyone. Today, we will explore the fascinating topic of the stages of growth and development. Understanding these stages is crucial because it helps us comprehend how individuals evolve from birth through old age, and how these changes influence their learning and behavior. Let's dive into Robert J. Habergerst's developmental stages to see how growth and development unfold over a lifetime. First, let's review the stages outlined by Robert J. Habergerst. 1. Prenatal Period, Conception to Birth This is the most rapid growth phase in human development. From a single cell, a fetus develops into a complete organism with all essential organs and functions. For instance, during this stage, a mother's prenatal care ensures that the fetus grows healthily, with regular checkups to monitor its development, including the heartbeat and limb movements. This foundation is crucial for the baby's future physical and cognitive capabilities. 2. Infancy, birth to 18 to 24 months. Infants rely heavily on caregivers as they begin to develop fundamental skills. This stage is marked by the beginning of language development, motor skills, and social interactions. For example, an infant starts to babble and eventually says their first words. They also begin to grasp objects, which is essential for their fine motor development. 3. Early childhood, end of infancy to 6 years. In early childhood, children become more self-sufficient and engage in play that promotes cognitive and social skills. They start to develop school readiness. Imagine a four-year-old learning to dress independently and recognize letters and numbers through play. This stage is vital for laying the groundwork for academic skills and social interaction. 4. Middle and Late Childhood, 7 to 12 Years this stage is characterized by mastering basic academic skills and expanding social understanding. Children become more aware of the world and their role in it. For example, a nine-year-old student might excel in reading and participate in a science fair, demonstrating the acquisition of academic skills and social interaction. 5. Adolescence, 13 years to 18 years. Adolescence involves rapid physical changes and a focus on identity formation. This period is marked by significant emotional and cognitive development. Picture a teenager experiencing a growth spurt and exploring new interests to figure out their identity. They might also face challenges such as mood swings and peer pressure. 6. Early adulthood, late teens or early 20s to 30s. Early adulthood is about establishing independence, pursuing career goals, and forming intimate relationships. For instance, a young adult might start their first job, move into their own apartment, and begin a serious relationship, setting the stage for personal and economic stability. 7. Middle Adulthood, 40 to 60 Years This stage involves expanding roles and responsibilities, such as career achievements and supporting the next generation. Individuals often reflect on their life and career. An example could be a 50-year-old professional who mentors younger colleagues and balances work with family responsibilities. 8. Late adulthood slash old age, 60s and above. Late adulthood involves adjusting to physical changes, retirement, and reflecting on one's life achievements. Consider a retired individual who looks back on their career, adjusts to physical changes, and finds new ways to stay engaged, such as volunteering or pursuing hobbies. Now, let's look at the characteristics of early childhood, from the end of infancy to around age 6. As mentioned here on our slide, problem or troublesome age. At this stage children develop distinctive personalities and demand an independence which, in most cases, they are incapable of handling successfully. Some are found to be obstinate, stubborn, negativistic, and antagonistic. They have frequent tantrums and often bothered by irrational fears and jealousies. Children at this stage may exhibit challenging behaviors as they test boundaries and assert independence. For example, a three-year-old might throw a tantrum when denied a toy, as they are learning to manage their emotions and desires. Aside from that, we also describe this stage as toy age because play is central, and children use toys to explore their environment and learn new skills. Imagine a child using building blocks to create structures, which helps them develop spatial awareness and problem-solving skills. Preschool age. Children start developing essential skills for school and engage in imaginative play. For instance, a preschooler might learn to recognize letters and numbers through interactive games and role-playing activities. 
We educators often describe this stage as preschool age because this is the perfect time to be exposed to preschool. Pre-gang age. Social interactions become more complex, but children are not yet forming tight-knit groups. A four-year-old might play with several friends but hasn't yet formed close friendships or social groups. Pre-gang age is the time where their social skills are getting laid or starting to form. Exploratory stage slash questioning stage, children ask many questions as they seek to understand their world. An example is a child who frequently asks why about various phenomena, reflecting their curiosity and eagerness to learn. And also, based on experience and observations, a child at this stage often asks many questions. Let's not discourage these questions because it's important in their growth and development. Creativity stage, imaginative play and creativity are prominent as children experiment with different roles. Consider a child who creates elaborate stories during playtime, such as pretending to be a superhero, which enhances their creativity and social skills. Let's explore the characteristics of late childhood, roughly ages 6 to 12. We also describe this stage as troublesome age, but mainly this is due to peer influence becoming more significant to them, and this may result to conflicts. For instance, a child might argue with friends over play activities or experience peer pressure to conform to group norms. Sloppy age, as children develop organizational skills, their personal spaces or work might be less tidy. For example, a child's desk might be cluttered with school supplies, reflecting their growing but still developing organizational skills. Quarrelsome age, conflicts with siblings or peers can occur as children assert themselves and test boundaries. A child might have frequent disagreements with siblings over shared toys or chores. Elementary school age, this stage is marked by mastering academic skills and forming broader social interactions. So we educators describe this stage as the formal schooling age. Critical period, it is described as critical period because there is a focus on achievement and developing habits that impact their future learning. For instance, a child develops a routine for completing homework and practicing new skills like playing a musical instrument. These habits and practices may result into whether they will be achievers as individuals or not. Gang age, peer acceptance becomes important, and children may seek membership in groups for social belonging. As compared to previous stage, pre-gang, their social skills and their desire to become part of groups are only starting, but in gang age or in the late childhood stage, this is mainly their concern aside from academics. A child might join a sports team or club to fit in with peers and establish their social identity. Having said that, this stage is described as Age of conformity, because children are more willing to conform to social norms and group expectations. For example, a child might adopt popular fashion trends or interests to fit in with their friends at school. Finally, let's discuss the characteristics of adolescence, from around ages 13 to 18. Adolescera, to grow, this stage involves significant physical and psychological growth. An adolescent might experience a growth spurt, and their body undergoes changes associated with puberty, such as developing acne or growing taller. To make these concepts more relatable, we'll use the story of Romeo and Juliet as an example. This classic play by William Shakespeare vividly portrays many aspects of adolescent development. Adolescera, to grow. Adolescence is a time of rapid growth, both physically and emotionally. In Romeo and Juliet, we see this through the characters of Romeo and Juliet, who are both teenagers navigating the tumultuous period of adolescence. Their rapid physical growth and evolving emotions reflect the developmental changes typical of this stage. Next, this stage is also described as Period of change, rapid physical, emotional, and social changes are characteristic of this stage. A teenager might experience mood swings and develop new interests as they navigate the transition into adulthood. The dramatic changes in Romeo and Juliet's lives, such as their intense love for each other, their conflicts with their families, and their ultimate tragic fate highlight the period of profound transformation that adolescents undergo. They experience intense emotions and seek to understand their place in the world, often leading to dramatic decisions and actions. Time to search for identity. Adolescents explore different roles and values to form their identity. For example, a teenager might experiment with different hobbies or styles to understand their personal preferences and identity. 
In the case of Romeo and Juliet, both of them are in the process of forming their identities. Their passionate relationship is part of their exploration of who they are and what they want out of life. Romeo's impulsive nature and Juliet's determination to defy her family's expectations reflect their struggles with identity and self-definition. Time of unrealism, adolescents may have idealistic and sometimes unrealistic expectations about the future. A teenager might envision a grand career or lifestyle that may not be entirely feasible but reflects their hopes and aspirations. With the story of the two, the idealistic and sometimes unrealistic views held by Romeo and Juliet are emblematic of adolescent thinking. They envision their love as a solution to their problems, despite the real and serious obstacles they face. This idealism leads them to make decisions that are emotionally driven rather than practical. Heightened emotionality, emotions can be intense and fluctuate frequently as adolescents deal with their evolving sense of self. An adolescent might react strongly to social situations, such as feeling elated after a positive event or deeply upset after a conflict with friends. The play is filled with extreme emotions, joy, despair, rage, and love all of which are heightened during adolescence. Romeo and Juliet's reactions to each other and their circumstances are intense and often lead to impulsive actions. Their feelings about their families, their love, and their ultimate fate all showcase the emotional extremes experienced during this stage. By examining Romeo and Juliet, we can see how the story embodies the complexity of adolescence. The characters' experiences reflect the typical developmental challenges of this stage, including the search for identity, the influence of emotions, and the impact of idealistic thinking. In conclusion, understanding the stages of growth and development helps us appreciate the various changes individuals undergo throughout their lives. Each stage has unique characteristics and challenges that influence learning and behavior. By recognizing these developmental milestones, we can better support and guide individuals through their growth journey. Thank you for joining today's lesson. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask. Stay tuned for more insights into developmental psychology. Have a great day.